Hello, Joao Simoes from Lisbon. You are the CEO of ID Spaces. We met, we met six years ago, I think, when we had the Coworking Europe conference in Lisbon. And uh, back in the time you were starting up. Today you are three big locations uh, in Lisbon. Uh, you are huge in Lisbon. So can you introduce us to ID Spaces and um, give us some information about, about the company. Hi, James. First, thanks for the invite. So, and, uh, so I'm one of the co-founders of Idea Spaces. So as you mentioned, we started, we are still babies. We started in 2014, initially with uh, 400 square meters. I hate to measure our business in square meters, but I think it's important to, to give this relevance. So in, uh, currently, as per today, we have 5,000 square meters and in three weeks time, we're going to be 10,000 square meters and going now from 600 members to 1,200 members. Um, so basically what we are, we are a community-driven co-working space. That's our philosophy. So it's all about people. It's all, uh, this is our focus since day one. Yeah. Um, of course, in 2014, we had to start the education process of people about co-working. Uh, but now I think it's uh, globally it's more recognized as a as a, um, a way forward, and this but is not is not any exception. So and we sustain our growth also over these years. Yeah. So so your your company um, some numbers that you you you, you disclose is uh, for instance. Uh, Eighty-five percent of your tenants are actually belonging to teams. Uh, Fifty percent are individual. And um, when we first met, it was really the beginning of this strategy of Lisbon to become a tech hub or tech magnet. And what you explained to me is that definitely your your success is also the result of this um, this strategy because uh, now Lisbon is indeed one of the most appealing places for for companies and startups. So can you elaborate a little bit? To us, what what happened there, and, and how you could embrace and, ad and address this uh, growing needs? I, th I think Lisbon has changed a lot since 2014. So not only on the city infrastructure, uh, as well on the, on the city awareness globally, uh, that also the impact of the web summit coming to Lisbon, the tourism effects, uh, also put basically Lisbon on the radar. Right. So, and this of course helped us a lot in terms of uh, first on the sustainability of our business, and secondly also on the growth, uh, because then we start to see more international companies as well international workers, so more more common as a digital nomads or freelancers uh, moving to Lisbon, and they need a place to work and uh, especially a place where they, they have some sense of belonging, right? And this is something that we have been working. And um, so I think nothing, as, as in, the, in, the, in the other dimensions of our lives, uh, nothing works by itself, right? So we did our share of work, mm. and we will continue to do our share of work. The factor, the lucky factor, uh, the lucky factor also worked on us, uh, so on, the, on this impact. But the rest is the other ecosystem players that also help us uh, to, to be more and more vibrant. Uh, city uh, and so I think, I think it's a, the construction of, of, of all these factors that help us to, to, yeah. to be where we are today. Right. Yeah, you, you mentioned for instance that the size of the teams you are you host in your um, two no, and, uh, and to be three buildings uh, can be two people teams up to 50 people teams and 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 what you explained was it's really interesting because uh, um, as Lisbon now works as a talent magnet you had a lot of growing IT companies from Finland from maybe I don't know Canada or Poland who opened branches in Portugal to lure to lure talent to 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 Lisbon because it's easier to bring people to Lisbon than to bring people to Helsinki. And then sure. they opened their branch and bring maybe 30 people in, in Lisbon and grew and grow their, their, their activity from there to, for help desking or tech support or development. Um, so, so, so that's really that how you benefit and you, how you can address the, um, and adapt to, the, to this rising reality of Lisbon, right? True. So, uh, again, putting Lisbon on the radar and also attract these companies. So, 
as an alternative to more expensive cities. Uh, of course, it's when we, what the Brexit effect started a couple of years ago, uh, we had a lot of demand, uh, well, at least inquiry in companies that were based in the UK, uh, considering to move their operations to alternative countries, and that Portugal was one of, of, of the cities uh, of the countries that were considered. But of course, the talent pool that we have it here, plus our um, na native hospitality uh, mindset, uh, plus also the, the infrastructure that the cities are, or the cities that we offer, it's very attractive to, to international workers and uh, also for the companies. But if we, even if now we see the, the, the housing prices increasing over the years, uh, the, 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 the payroll or the wages of the, of the, of the, of the people also increasing, fortunately, um, because I, I think just the hiring talent for low cost is definitely not, not the, the way forward for the future in terms of sustainability. Uh, but it's still cheaper hiring uh, a tech engineer uh, in Lisbon than going trying to hire in, in London or in France or in other uh, European countries, right? Uh, so this is all the construction of all these factors uh, put Lisbon, not only Lisbon, I'm always referring to Lisbon because that's where we're based, to be honest. But, uh, but we see also in the Porto, there's a, a lot of growth over the years. Um, so Porto as a, as a whole um, uh, has great conditions, uh, not only on talent, but also on the infrastructures um, to offer to, to these companies. And what we see now, most of the companies, even now, when they start, they, see, they have with the plan for two to three, two to three years. Mm -hmm. Initially, they, they, don't, they don't want to come into with a longer period than three years uh, because they want to ramp up, they want to test the concept and see if the operations go well. Uh, so normally, they try to avoid traditional renting um, from the office space yeah. because first, there's the commitment, not only five to ten years of contract of the leases, and, and also there's a huge capex uh, investment also uh, to ramp up those offices. And also, um, normally our interfaces are the, the, the CLOs, uh, and the, now the, the new person that went is the, the HR. Yeah. Uh, they, they also use to try to understand what the community-based uh, community, uh, community uh, concept can bring to attract and to retain talents, right? So, um, and this helps a lot. So, so are, they, are they aware of this, this added value of the, of the community and the socialization that uh, the, the employees can have and enjoy? If they are not aware, we, we reinforce the message. Uh, we can, if we talk with the CFO and he's going to discuss the square meter cost or the paragraph cost, etc., I said, okay, guys. This is all like you go to a resort with all inclusive, right? That's what we offer. Yeah. So this is a tangible services that we provide, but also there are you know, the non-tangible services that we provide. Uh, for example, if by we surprise your team members today with a free lunch uh, or a free uh, breakfast, etc., or a free event, or etc. This is money that you are not spending, so you're already paid, so it's already on your, your running OPEX. Mm -hmm. um, but this works on, the, on their motivation, on the, on the, on the, on the retention of their team members, right? So this is costly uh, activities that we are developing. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we have the free beer every week and uh, the, 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 the other activities. But uh, this surprise element that we introduce ad hoc, uh, well, not so ad hoc, on the, on the community, uh, help them to, to surprise their team members and to be more happy at work, right? So, and um, that's why the, the HR people uh, also uh, not only looking for the health and safety, uh, but also especially uh, on, the, on the employee engagement, so on the employee retain, retention strategies, and uh, also. For me, I think the next step would be the knowledge sharing uh, step. But I think most of the companies are still not ready to take that step um, on the knowledge sharing. They do it unofficially and, um, on, the, on, the, on the breakouts that we do, right, or on the events. The 
because I think the future is not only sharing space, not only sharing experience, but also sharing uh, knowledge. And I think that's the future. So you mean you mean like uh, things like peer learning and uh, um, things where you can have a kind of mentorship kind of stuff. Uh, that's what you are thinking of. That you get you should facilitate as well to so add a layer of service to what you are already doing. We we already do this knowledge or this sharing between let's put it at the company level. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we when uh, especially now we launch our new app. We ask what are what are your interests, what are your skills, what you what are your goals. We cross this with our, with our data team to understand. Okay, Shane uh, is looking uh, to to have or looking for maybe what partner with the, is interested in football or is interested in having a beer or cinema. So we try to make this basically matchmaking between yeah. uh, uh, people on the, on their uh, uh, personal time. Let's put it this way. But also on the company levels, uh, we try to increase their business inside the community. So the last survey we did, it was end of 2016. And so we need to update these numbers. Um, but we asked what was the internal business generated between the community members. And it was over 1 million euros. So it's just internal sales between the uh, members. Between people. Uh, yeah. uh, and I think now, if we run the survey now again, the number will be higher. And uh, that's what we, uh, our theoretically, and our dream is for every year that the member puts uh, uh, to us in, uh, in our community, we want to have the multiple at least four or five times uh, what he does through us. So that's the return on investment yeah. financially yeah. if we yeah. want to uh, have this impact. Yes, yeah, that uh, you are also working as a lead generator for them, and that uh, the, the the subscription is paid back through the to just the business to generate being part of the ecosystem. Uh, That's the idea. And we do it very naturally from day one. So yeah. when we do the onboarding of the uh, of the, the company and the, and, the, and the team, the team members, we try to understand. Okay, please tell us what are, what are your interests? What are you looking for? Are you looking to to buy smarter? Or you want to sell smarter? So what are what do you buy? And then we try to make these cross links with the, with the community members to have a closer services, so proximity to service providers as well as possible for a better rate. Um, so this is something that we are constantly doing now, and we I think we we tend to keep this on the human factor on these connections to be by our community managers, to be done by our community manager, but now also due to this COVID, um, we also introduced these features on, the, on our app where you can basically have a marketplace yeah. where you can go, okay, I'm, I want to buy these or I want to sell these and make these connections uh, digitally between people. Interesting. And um, so you speak about the COVID, so um, ju just briefly, the, uh, you mentioned the fact, for instance, that you were creating a specific, specific subscription um, for Steam, for instance, so 10 people could uh, just pay for five desks and rotate due to the fact that they are uh, uh, not coming back all together. Um, what, can you tell us a little bit about the situation for, for you in Lisbon regarding the COVID? And what you, you expect it to, to come back in September, um, the, 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 the normal situation? Yeah, so when we, we, we had the break on, on the operations uh, due to the, this pandemic, uh, in the meantime, so where basically 90% of our team was back home, we were seeking uh, what could be the options for the future, right? So we have created a few new memberships, uh, especially pushing even, even further the flexibility uh, approach to the companies. Uh, because one of the people said, okay, remote work is the future. I do agree. Working from home, our perspective is not remote work. And it's not the future, right? So we try to, to approach the companies, okay, uh, we understand that, that uh, now we want to protect your teammates, but they also they are shouting to you, okay, we need a, a place to work at least a couple of days per week. So that's why I decided to create this rework membership where we offer uh, the companies, instead of paying 10 memberships for their 10 members, 
they, they, but they buy five memberships and then, then people can use it, right? So this is one of the alternatives that we offer also to, to the discovery. Uh, of course, as any other co-working space or any other business was impacted by COVID, but most of the companies were impacted by COVID. Yeah. Fortunately, uh, in our business plan, we, we projected a worst case scenario that really happened. I think some okay. of the proactive measures that we, we took and our social responsibility with those companies help us to retain and to have a more cohesive approach with our members and most of them stay with us. Um, but uh, so we, we stopped operations uh, beginning the end of March and until mid May. We were basically with the minimum services. And since then, we have been slowly wrapping up uh, with this new normal. Uh, and we see a, a growth, a slow growth over the weeks. Uh, but now it's a summer break. Uh, kids uh, will return to school now in the beginning of September. Um, so what we expect, and we already have some contract signed for the beginning of September to, to, to have a more normal return to, to the office. But I think each country has a different reality. Unfortunately, now we see a growth of the number of cases in Spain and in yeah. any other cases in any, any other countries. But uh, in Portugal, it's more or less stable, right? So we have 100 to 200 cases per day, and it's more or less stable. And uh, we see uh, the level of confidence of people and also the need of returning to some kind of reality or new reality uh, and coming back to work. So, but I think it will be a transition period until the end of the year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you, Joao, for sharing uh, your story with us and uh, all the good tips and, uh, and all the, the promises that are coming up uh, still despite the... Uh, you know how hard the situation is for the moment but um yes we are confident that uh we'll be back to normal and um so we hope to see you in vienna for the co-working conference uh, either physically or virtually <laughs> yes and uh we wish you the best uh, until then likewise so thank you have a great day and uh i will be here if you need that great okay. thanks a lot bye-bye